I'm here at Printing United in the Canon booth, and this is the Canon Colorado XL series. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of these core technologies that the XL has. So talk to me first a little bit about the UV gel here in this printer. Okay, so UV gel, people might know that already for the Colorado M series. Since 2017, when you introduced it, more than 5,000 machines in the market. People love it, it's having a lot of traction. But people said, well, can't you stretch the printer? Can't you make it print on rigids? Well, that's what we did. So UV gel is at the heart of this machine. And actually, it looks, feels, and the properties like stretch, robustness, are exactly the same as the Colorado M series behind us. The idea was, well, customers, you're able to load balance between two platforms. The outlook will be identical. Canon's always been great about that consistency across their platforms. Now, what about the UV gel print head technology? Uh, UV gel print heads, we took that to the net level. As you know, Canon, we make, design, and develop our own print heads. Um, just by comparison, there, in that machine, there are four print heads for CMYK printing, and then you add a fifth one for white printing. In this machine, we got three print heads two for CMYK and we add a third one for white. So that's a massive amount of firepower that we have in one print that. UV gel tri drive. That's the third thing I want to talk about. What's the what's important about that and what what uh, what are, what's under the hood? Okay. So tri drive, that's the belt system. That's basically about the media handling that handles the rolled materials or rigids. Now, in most hybrid machines, you have two rollers with a belt around, or in the more expensive types, three. But it's a static system. Our tri-drive, it's a three-roller system, but all three rollers communicate with each other, right? And the bottom one, basically, we connected that to a set of pistons, so we're able to move it. We're able to push it out, so it always provides even tension to the belt. Because at the beginning, all the belts work fine with all machines. But after a while, there starts to be some slack in the belt. And that's where it goes wrong. Then it starts skewing, etc. So we constantly provide an even tension by pushing it out. But there's more. We don't only push it out. We can also pitch that bottom roll. And why did we do that? Well, effectively, we created a self-steering belt. So if there's any skewing and there's lots of sensors and high-speed imaging sensors in the machine, basically, we have a self-steering belt that can compensate for any skewing or misalignment. Fantastic. I mean, that sounds, that sounds complicated. It is. <laughs> <laughs> now, talk to me about the dynamic motion control, DMC. Yeah, dynamic motion control. Remember the printheads that they only have two for CMYK printing, or three if you want to have white? Yep. Well, effectively, that allows us to create a very lightweight and agile carriage. Now, that's cool. We can do stuff with that. So what we did is we created an inner carriage that is able to float freely. So inside the carriage, we can take the printheads and move them back and forth, even pitch. Yeah. So that's unique. Now what problem do we solve with that? Two things. First of all, when you watch this machine printing, usually other machines, when you have, let's say, a four-pass four pass print mode, right? every pass that you lay down, you advance the media a bit. Then another pass lays down, and then you advance the media a bit further. What we do, because moving media around is the source of all misery in the hybrid world. Yeah. So we lay a pass, right? And we move the media. We lay the second pass, and then we should move the media, but we actually, we don't. We move the inner carriage. So by default, we only step or move the media forward half the time of what any other machine is doing. That's unique. Half the chance for problems to occur. Exactly, exactly. But there's more we can do that. You know, even if you can build a machine that is geometrically perfect with zero tolerance, you're still going to have media issue. Why is that? Basically, 10 foot wide media, it's never perfect. Like 10 foot wide banner, there's usually a sag in the middle. It's even worse with textiles, like a woven structure. There's always an internal tension in it. Exactly. So when you move that on the belt further, that internal tension, well, Sooner or later, something's got to give, and you have a bit of micro-slippage. We're talking microns here, eh? but 
but that's when the the white lines appear that's where the bending appears well what do we do you know canon is a camera company right there are lots of imaging sensors and scanners in the machine while we are printing we are constantly looking at the media underneath we're constantly taking snapshots and when the carriage comes back we're comparing that where it was in the previous pass if the me if the media is where it, we expect it to be that's great if we found out let's say there was some micro slippage in the middle of the media we can compensate for that on the fly so basically it's like having a lane assist in your car but for printing passes so with this we can guarantee when you lay your first print pass down and you have then some media slippage we can guarantee that that second print press actually will follow that distortion so they fit and align nice to each other and those, those print heads can flow and move right with so it's watching for problems and adjusting right when that problem might arise exactly exactly yeah. okay so final thing the fifth thing that i want to touch on this full beam uh curing i believe is what you call it when you look at other machines and other UV printing machines, you always see a light going from left to right, back and forth, right? When you watch this printing, basically you see a continuous even glow. Why is that? Basically we made the curing unit, not just two lights on the side of the carriage, we made it a full beam. So basically we got a curing unit that's 11 foot wide. What problem do we solve with that, apart from the fact that it looks cool, right? Mm -hmm. UV, <laughs> UV banding or football field banding or soccer field banding, the lawnmower effect. Why is that? Basically, when you have a shuttling carriage, right, every droplet of ink receives a high intensity, sudden burst amount of UV energy, but they all receive it at a very different time, right? That's what's creating the lawnmower effect. We, every droplet of ink over that 11 foot wide printing width, Every droplet gets the exact, even, continuous amount of curing energy. So no more UV banding. So we've got UV gel, we've got the UV gel printhead technology, we've got the tri-drive, we've got the DMC, the dynamic motion control, control, and we've got this full UV full beam curing. Yeah. Five pretty incredible technologies that you've packed into this machine. And there's really so much more, oh, but these are five big, highlight top level things that you yeah. got to know about this Canon Colorado XL. Thank you so much for your time this morning. It was a pleasure. Yes, thank you. And that's it from the Canon booth here at Printing United.